What do we do? We say get out of your comfort zone, right? It's all about doing something you've never done before, getting uncomfortable. Right now I'm about to do the Santa Monica stairs. Some wood stairs that head all the way up. They're a straight shot. And I wanted to do this on camera because I've never done it before. So you're about to see me somewhat intimidated. I've got my heart rate monitor on right now. My heart rate is 72. If this thing hits somewhere near 170, 180, 160 on my way up during that minute, then I'll know that I was hit training. If it doesn't, then I obviously was not hit training. Hit training is as hard as you can go. So accountability on the heart rate is, uh, is very, very important and will take away your anxiety that you are not wasting your time, for lack of better words, right? So what I've done is I've got uh, my polar heart rate monitor on. This is gonna send a signal to the watch, real time, telling me if I'm here doing what I'm trying to do. And today, that's burning fat. Releasing fat from the cell so it can be absorbed by the body. Uh, we're gonna get going. I'm gonna reference this heart rate a lot. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and figure out how many calories we burn so we know what kind of post-workout nutrition to take. Now, I'm a fan of Vitargo. It doesn't have to be Vitargo, it can be something else. But how do you know what to put in your body if you don't know what you burnt? All these guys here running the stairs, to be honest with you, I don't get it. If they don't know what they're burning, how the hell do they know what to eat? To me, that's a waste of time. You're getting skinny fat. Right now, heart rate is 74, 75. That's somewhat intimidating. Two, one. Oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. Okay, okay, I got scared, I got scared. Now my heart rate's 92, thinking about this. <laughs> Two, one. I'm on call, so like, I have to get another job where I can work for it. Oh, Stairs a mean one. You got shaky legs coming back down. Hey. Oh, mercy. Hurry, right, hit about 160 on the way up. We're down to 108. Oh man, let's go. Oh, oh buddy. Oh, oh man. Back down the hill and rest. Head about 136. So. By resting, heart rate right now is in my fat burning zone for my age, right? I'm about to fly out of my fat burning zone into that hit cardio training. Here we go. Oh, oh. Find a rail. Legs gonna get a little wobbly. Keep pushing. I'm gonna fall down these stairs, might as well get it on video, right? I feel like you're videoing a car wreck. Oh. minutes and 20 seconds since we started. We got one more trip up and down. Hurry. Right. 167. 
Oh, 168. Oh. Okay. Today we're health mercy. How long it takes to go up and down the stairs, right? And this is working out to be about a minute and a half to a minute and a half rest. That's fine. 20 minutes as hard as you can go with a rest. Usually, the way I like to do it is the time of exertion is the same the size of rest. If you're under a certain body fat percentage. If you're like 15 to 20% body fat, go ahead and train hard 30 seconds, rest a minute. Maybe in 90 seconds. But don't stick with it as you lose fat, which you will. So hold my idea of these videos. Whew. Up your active time and drop your rest time. Time to go. Oh! Notice how many heart rate monitors you see on these stairs. How do these guys know what they're burning, what the heart rate is, and what they should eat? That's free advice to anybody that can hear me. Well, 66. Okay. Come on. All right. Guys, what you just saw, quick examples of HIIT training. Now, I didn't necessarily pick a time. All my HIIT training charts, those are 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. There's a one minute on, one minute off. 15 seconds, 15 seconds. All those different ways of keeping track of your rest to hold you accountable. It's a structured deal. Well, right now, the structured deal is a set of stairs, okay? I had to go up and down them as fast as hard as I could for 20 minutes. Said I did tempo training, 24 minutes, 17 seconds, exactly 300 calories. Average heart rate, 135, max heart rate, 169. You say, Kimberly, those aren't that great of numbers. To be honest, they're not. But I'm rolling around at 195 with very little fat and not a lot of carbs in me. So, given the fact I'm hosting this video with my eyes closed, I suffered. Part of your accountability is your general feeling. Are my legs shot? Are they so pumped? They're screaming? Yes. Am I sweating in this beautiful sun? Yes. My eyes burning because they're salt in them? Yes. Does my heart rate monitor say what it's supposed to? Yes. Could it have been better? Some of you guys are heart, averaging heart rate of uh, like 140, 150. I used to too. The better shape you get in, it's harder to do the same thing and get your heart rate high. That's a good thing. That means you're getting healthy. So I'm not copping out but I do understand why my heart rate doesn't get as high. For instance, I like this analogy. For years, well for a year, I started on the treadmill and I'd run at a number five, okay? I wear a heart rate monitor, I'm educated. I keep a diary, I know exactly what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, when I'm doing it. And it helps me reach my goals, right? Well, as I'm evolving, you know, a few years back, my education and the heart rate monitor training, I was like, well, what the heck? I have to run on a six to keep my heart rate at my fat burning zone. I was like 135, 140 for the same exact exercise on the treadmill. So I went from a five to a six in order to keep my heart rate the same. Well, I didn't like that. I'm not trying to be an athlete. Well, I wasn't at the time. I'm just trying to look a certain way. I just want the fat off me. Well, I'll, I'll be danged if a few months later, now I'm running on a number seven on the treadmill to keep my heart rate at my fat burning zone. That's kind of annoying. So what you're saying is, is I have to try harder? That's one perception. The other perception would be is, yeah! I'm getting into great shape. It's harder for me to do the same exercise and get the amount of calories burned that I'm trying for, but I'll be danged if that ain't a good problem to have. So, if you wanna know how to use this thing, you wanna make sure you're staying in fat burning zone, you wanna make sure you're hit training, you wanna make sure that when you're training your biceps or your triceps or your shoulders, that your heart rate is what it should be, that you're ripping apart muscle tissue, that it will scar over and get bigger and you'll burn fat to fuel the entire thing, join KimberlyPlant.com. What do I have waiting for me? Shameless plug for Vitargo, but I'm doing it. Fastest carb in the world. Proven scientifically. What are you taking? Look for the test, clinical. Did your product spend the money? Mine did. Just like a heart rate monitor, I'm educated with what I put into my body. No excuse for not knowing. Why what? Why what? And prove it. Why what and prove it? In this, is exactly 75 grams of Vitargo 
and exactly 30 grams of a hydrolyzed whey protein. Both of them, to word it better, uh, to dumb it all up, pre-digested. Pre-digested means your body didn't have to digest it, so it's available now. Well, my heart rate's still through the roof. I need my post-workout post nutrition to be available now. Dave, why aren't you having a banana? What about an apple? Uh, guys, maybe we all forgot, but magazines have to fill pages every month. So they're gonna write about an apple, they're gonna write about dextrose, they're gonna write about waxy maze, they're gonna write about Vitargo to fill pages. Do your research. Understand that those are great articles. Keep reading them. I love the magazines. I'm not saying it. Hell, I'm in them. What I'm saying is, is understand that sometimes people just write to fill a page to match a beautiful picture. Perfect example, we're gonna take nutrition out of it. I read an article once that said, don't stretch. Why? Why don't you stretch before you work out? Because it loosens up the joint. You're not as strong. So what did I do for a year? I didn't stretch. Then I read an article, same magazine. You have to stretch. Why wouldn't you stretch before you work out? So, understand that in the same magazine, not to be redundant, you will read one month, don't stretch before you train, and the next month, stretch before you train. Both legitimate arguments, both with research, both intriguing reads. Make up your own mind, but if you're following me, which is part of it, why you pay $10 a month, I'm gonna help you make up your mind. Hey, I think I figured some of this out. That's all I got for you today.